the captain talked earlier about a command presence for LaOrca, and I think what makes this program different than some of the others around the country is it's really uh, embraced fully by the command staff, by the field teams, and by re retailers. Uh, where we've seen these programs succeed, it's really uh, a true partnership from the public and private sector. And where some of them have been challenged, frankly, is when you have uh, a well-intentioned detective or a well-intentioned retailer that starts a program, gets a meeting together, um, the meetings don't quite cut it. It's got to be a truly sustained um, trust network and ongoing dialogue that takes place between the retailers and, and law enforcement. And, and doesn't the law enforcement community really, shouldn't they be responsible for maintaining that database? I mean, that's really the core tool. And, and really that's law enforcement's responsibility, so to speak. I mean, can you really let a retailer do that? Well, I think we, we, we came right back to that. It's, again, we're playing like the referee, correct? We're the neutral party in this partnership. And it's the trust. Um, who else can you trust? I mean, we're law enforcement. Um, uh, again, with the approval and vetting, especially if you're vetting and approving law enforcement personnel. Mm -hmm. So rightfully so, it, sh it should be. Now, there are uh, some programs out there that, that has that type of uh, safety systems in place um, that could do the same thing, uh, meaning a, pr a private vendor. Now, that's what the next future will hold in the sense of what the captain is giving me direction is to look into those type of programs that can give us the best security that if we do have to join a separate vendor or different program software um, that if it's being vetted by the private sector who is it mm. and again you know we'll have to do our own background type of investigation in the sense of the trust if and, and I didn't mean to cut you off Joe okay. so I apologize no no worries I think Joe can add to that but I think that that's the basic of, sure. of that. Yeah, and I, th I think to the question about retail participation, um, really you see that on both ends. Um, some law enforcement agencies are resource constrained. Um, they don't necessarily have either the expertise or the resources to devote to a low orca style program, an orca style program. But on the retail side, you have the challenges of when is it appropriate to share information? What information is appropriate to put out in the public public domain or share with potentially your competitors and uh, other community partners. So that sometimes restricts participation. But I think LORC is designed and, and some of the other successful programs in a way that uh, if you don't participate in the database, it's still beneficial to come to the meetings, make the contacts. There are offline discussions that take place all the time, especially with big cases. And I think we've all been in the room where somebody brings up an issue that's happening here in the, the, the LA region and five other retailers jump in, say, I know that person or I've had that same issue. They all get together after the meeting and it turns into a successful case. So does that make the NRF's investigator network meetings around the country kind of the feeder to the ORCA programs around the United States? Well, you know, the network, the investigators network was really set up to get people together with their law enforcement partners. So in some places like Los Angeles, rather than doing a meeting here, which would be duplicative with the LORCA program, we've pushed out and gone into other markets that don't necessarily have an ORCA style program. Um, the, at the end of the day, I think we're all after the same thing, which is let's prevent losses in the retail community. Let's make sure that the stolen merchandise is sold and people pay taxes and that fuels the revenues for the cities and local government. Um, a question on another subject. The gateway crime. You hear a lot about it, a lot of people talk about it, and we all kind of understand it. But, but if you look at ORC being a gateway crime, what would you say is the most prevalent gateway crime? What is it? What is the one crime? Is it, is it auto theft? Is it drugs? Is it, you know, what way, and that's a bizarre question, I know it's a big one, but I just kind of wanted to ask. Well, I think in my opinion, I, th I think it's drugs. I mean, that's always been a big problem. Um, unfortunately, you know, people do commit thefts to, to support their habits in, mm -hmm. in drug use. So absolutely, that, that's again, from my opinion, my boss may have a different opinion, but I think that's, you know, I think that's what, what the big problem is. Last year, La Orca added the U.S. Secret Service and the financial institutions to the program. Uh, how do you engage the local field office, and how do the local and, and federal agencies interact with La Orca? Uh, I'll answer the last question first. Yes, 
Uh, we have a number of uh, federal agencies that are involved uh, with LaOrca, from the FBI, Secret Service, uh, and DEA, ATF, and so forth. Um, the uh, ORC uh, financial issues, they're, 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 there's a nexus there because when you talk about skimming, when you talk about uh, forgeries, identity theft, and other issues, losing credit cards, um, it's just a natural nexus. Uh, I sat with the uh, uh, then Steve Williams, who was the, the uh, uh, assistant director of the Secret Service here in the Los Angeles area, and uh, asked him if they would really uh, get involved and take a, a, a a significant part with uh, the financial side, and he just jumped at the, the chance of that because he saw the benefit of uh, getting the information and working in partnership. The U.S. Secret Service, um, uh, all my career that I'm aware of, have really want to work in partnership with local law enforcement. And so what we did is we brought uh, one of his agents to be the um, uh, co-chair of the financial side, and we brought um, a member from uh, American Express to be the um, um, uh, financial co-chair of that. And we meet jointly and we talk about the issues the same way we do in the retail side. And uh, we've got a ways to go, but I think it, each year we're, we're gonna improve and increase the, the membership and, and uh, uh, address those issues as it relates to financial uh, ORC. And in your first year, you had how many members, Kent? Well, in the first year, we probably had upwards of about 500 members in the okay. first year. Okay. And how many attended the conference, the first conference the you had? The very first conference we had was 630, approximately 630 people showed up to our first. For the first one. Uh, we had our second annual last year mm -hmm. uh, in February. Uh, we had 830. I remember. Uh, who showed up uh, last year, and we we're anticipating upwards of over 1,000 this year. How would you break that up, if you, retail versus law enforcement, or, you know, can you? Well, you know, I, I, if I had to guess, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's about a 60-40 split. Uh, you probably have about 40 percent law enforcement, 60 uh, percent uh, from the private sector. Great number. Yes, sir. Um, you, you talk about the importance of corporate sponsorships on your website and state that there's a need for far greater resources are needed to address the magnitude of the threats we now face. Uh, can we talk about the magnitude of the threats and, and the resources that you need? I mean, the magnitude of the threats is, is, a, is a pretty bold phrase. Is, is there any way we can define that, talk about that a little bit? I think, uh, Captain? When you, when you look at ORC, the, the, the magnitude of the threat, and Joe has mentioned a little bit, uh, in this age of, of budget constraints and, and so forth, one issue you look at is when sales taxes and so forth are not being paid because people are, are stealing, uh, the government and, and, and resources the government can bring to bear are, are affected. Also, you have the issue of, of, of families having prices uh, um, going up because people have to deal with the, 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 the thefts that, the, that they have to anticipate. Uh, also, you have health issues. When you have individuals stealing baby formula and so forth and selling that on the market, you don't know how uh, that's been tainted or how it's been a form, and so you have uh, issues there that you have to deal with. So the magnitude is... is, is, is the magnitude is there. Yeah. That's where you... Yeah. The, the, what about the resources that you need? I mean, how is that defined? Obviously, we know it's money. We, we, know, it's, we know it's people. I mean, I, I know Los Angeles has a designated senior detective working it. I mean, yeah, are, and the, does, do the other towns or, or orcas have such a resource? And, and if not, you know, what's the move there? What's I think the orcas try to do what they can in terms of resources, but I put, I saw the benefit of putting a senior detective uh, in this position. One, Los Angeles is so big. We're 465 square miles. We have 21 police stations. And a number of other specialty uh, divisions within the city, the city of LA. And it's my view that La Orca or, or Orca should be a facilitator for the retailers because if a retailer has an issue, shouldn't have to go all the way around uh, the 21 stations and say, can you help me? They come to one person who has the experience, who's been around, and he or she, can, and in this case, Kent Oda, can, can get them. If my division 
and deal with it, then he has my authority to send them to the six sections that work under me to get them to, to, to deal with it. If we don't, if it's not within our, our responsibility, then he can facilitate that getting to uh, one of the 21 stations. And also I've seen him help people in the Western United States in terms of facilitating getting to other police departments. And so people see that they can come to that one focal point, that facilitator, if you will, and then can get that assistance. We also added this uh, uh, last year, a retail desk in, in uh, uh, Commercial Crimes Division, our division, where the retailers can come in and it's right next to where Kent sits and they can discuss issues and, and, and cases too. So uh, I really think it's very beneficial to have that one person deal with those things and, 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 and be able to have the, the uh, retailers come and, and feel that someone's gonna listen to them. So you've actually established a desk for the retail community to be able to, to focus their efforts and come and share and discuss and, and work together. Yes. And in these economic times, you've been successful in maintaining the budget for the retail world. Very tough, but we're gonna, I think, and my chief believes it's important, and we're doing everything we can to ensure that uh, that, that uh, continues. You know, we, we've seen ORCA programs evolving in some other places, obviously, especially over the last three years. I mean, what are the differences addressing retail crime in a large city like Los Angeles versus a small or even medium-sized city? I think my, uh, we discussed a little bit in terms of how big you know, the real estate is here in, in, in LA in terms of the, the 465 square miles, the 21 stations. And um, uh, one thing we have here in LA in terms of the way my division is, is um, uh, assembled is a lot of the things that deal with ORC is under our roof in terms of I have the forgery investigators, I have an entity theft investigators, I have fraud investigators, I have a commercial auto theft that deals with uh, cargo theft. And, and so we, uh, I can direct, or in my absence, Kent can direct our resources to deal with, with those things as it relates to ORC. And a lot of my investigators have that experience or the expertise where they can help um, the, the retailers or the, the LP individuals deal with their specific crimes. Now, in a smaller agency, <clears throat> I would suggest that in terms of, they may not have that ability, but they can work together in terms of uh, working in, in, a, in, a, in a virtual, if you will, task force. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, one agency may be able to do X and another agency may be able to do Y. And, but keeping that communication together, mm -hmm. uh, working through that, that, that uh, website, working through the meetings and, 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 and uh, dealing it in that fashion, mm -hmm. and, and keeping an open dialogue, I think, can benefit the smaller agencies too. 